I forgot a topic that we have to touch on. We got Bull got hot on it specifically well, during the yeah, pre-show I mean, meeting. I, I don't need Juan. Th- Listen, I, Juan Thornhill. Should Allow we me. show the tweets first so everyone's on the same page? I show page? the tweets. First. Give me the context. Okay. Give me the yeah, context. Here's the context. Newly signed safety, Juan Thornhill <laughs> for the Browns, comes from Kansas City. He's okay. not used to losing. Didn't lose a lot in Kansas City, won two Super Bowls. And he tweeted a thread, three tweets. I believe it was two days ago on Wednesday. So yesterday, on Wednesday. And Steve, take the first tweet. We'll read all three. This from the chosen Juan, Juan Thornhill, new Brown safety. If y'all can't tell, I'm tired of the negativity, and I've only been here for three weeks. We will win this year 100 emoji. Next one. And I don't care what happened any year before I got here. New era, and last but not least, the third one. If you aren't all the way in with us this year, then peace. Hashtag dog. Fight. Okay. He's been here two effing seconds, all right? I, Juan Thornhill, I love that you're excited about the Browns. We're all excited about the Browns, okay? I am so sick of this bullshit about th- people being too negative about the Browns. We have, we have the biggest Homer fan base in America. Most of the media members are puff pieces here. All right? There's, there's very few tough media members. We have, by and large... I'm ve- sitting right here. I said very few. <laughs> I didn't say none. Jason's one of the few tough ones out there. I'm teasing. All right? I'm teasing. Our media is soft as Charmin, by and large, the, the beat reporters in this town that cover teams. Okay? There's a few exceptions to that. Uh, this idea that people are overly negative. The team has sucked forever. When the team loses year after year after year, how do you expect people to be positive? Now, I can't speak for every member of the media, okay? I, maybe there are some people who do this. I'm certainly sure there are. By and large, when you're a media member, you're not looking to be negative on purpose. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense, all right? When a team sucks, you're going to be negative because the team sucks. Juan Thornhill's been here two seconds. We've been told by a million players and a million coaches that what happened before here doesn't matter. Well, it matters to the people here, okay? Because you may be here for a year or two or five or eight. That's great. And I think you're a nice player. I'm happy you're here. I'm glad you're enthusiastic. I'm glad you think you're going to win. We think the Browns are going to win too. But this idea that everybody's got to shut up and that if anybody says anything negative, they can't root for the team. F you! That's ridiculous. People are scarred by what's happened year after year. And people have had positive vibes year after year. And players have said they're going to win. They're going to do this. They're going to give us playoff tickets. And they never come through. So stop talking. Stop complaining. And just do it on the field. Part of what makes it, especially with that franchise, what makes it so difficult, I, I've talked to players and executives who come here, they're like, yeah. man, I didn't have anything to do with 20 years ago. It's like, well, guess what? That's part of the role of coming here is carrying that burden. That's Be- right. Because it, 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 you aren't responsible for it, but you have to be aware of it, and you have to understand why people are so upset and why they're so hurt and why it's so frustrating to them. Because it, uh, uh, Richard Jefferson's a good example. In 2016, before they won the championship, I was talking to RJ about just the drought of Cleveland. He's like, I don't give a damn about that. I wasn't here for that. I'm trying to win for me. Like, y'all along for the ride, and, you know, I hope we win and you can celebrate, but I want to win for me because I've never won a championship, and we got a good chance to win a championship. And just the way that he phrased it was just different. But but I understand from the but player's that's perspective. fine, Jason. I get that. Yeah. Well, I don't have a problem with Richard Jefferson saying that. But Richard Jefferson, I don't know if he did this, but if he would have said – well, the fans should shut the hell up. Right. You, if you if you don't care about the history, if Juan Thornhill doesn't care about the history, that's fine. If right. I were him, I wouldn't care either. Right. But you can't tell everybody else here not to care about that right. or that, that it's not a factor. You can't just parachute in there is, two it, seconds it, ago. It goes a little bit back to what Cecil was saying. There is such a sense of entitlement with players today. Can't take any criticism. They're soft and all in so many – I can't tell you how many – athletes I've come across here in town that just can't handle any sort of criticism whatsoever and it just being real it's not even criticism it's It's just just facing the reality of the situation I mean and they just can't handle it when you got four four record four since the 80s four four teams over 500 you know people tell me all the time well G Bush you know sometimes you know I listen and you're just too negative on them and I'm saying listen bro I'm not being negative I'm just married to the facts bro like at the end of the day, 
You don't you don't you don't have anything to show for what you're talking about. It, it would sound stupid for you to be optimistic about a team who you know is not good. But here's what the thing. I'll tell you when you did well. Hey, listen, I trust me. We would like to say that you guys are really good. Yeah. Go back and look at 2020. There wasn't too much negative stuff going around. Even when people said, well, maybe Baker isn't the guy. Guess what? Everybody was excited that they beat the Steelers in Pittsburgh. Everybody was excited and, 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 and rallying around the team. And see, sometimes players, y'all got to understand something. Y'all got to get in y'all's books. Y'all got to read philosophy. Y'all got to get in psychology, sociology, and the way you endear yourself to people, bro. The way you come in here and say, man, look, I, I would be bad too. And they can boo us all they want. But guess what? We are we are part of a legacy and until we win we are a part of a legacy of losing and we they deserve better. We're going to try to get it done here and I know a lot of players have said that before, but what I'm saying is we're going to put that type of effort in and we're going to make sure that we hold people accountable if they ain't putting that that level of, of playing and people would like it. But when you go out and say, oh, you, you, you I wasn't here. You're not self aware, bro. You you making it. That's just one. We've heard that before. You're actually making yourself bigger than the team, bigger than the history. The history that helmet is going to outlive you. That color, them colors and them brown helmets going to outlive everybody, including me, including Jason. We got our little opportunity to opine on the Browns while we on this little blue rock called Earth, and you get a couple of seconds, like Cecil said, to come put the pads on and do what you do and get paid a lot of money. At the end of the day, the legacy continues to live, so you got to understand what the past yeah. is to even talk about the future. And here's, here's a fact. When the Browns win, we get better ratings. <laughs> and more money. So, so we want the Browns to win and sponsors. So there, there's certainly nobody audit. wants to purposely be negative. But when the team plays like shit, we're going to tell you they play like shit, and they played like shit for most of the last thirty years. So what do you want from people? This guy's too negative. I mean, whenever I hear fans complain about that, I always think this person has never seen a newspaper in an in, a, in an East Coast city, because. <laughs> When I was working in New York, okay, I'd have fans, Mariano Rivera, the greatest closer of all time. There's no debate. There's no discussion. He'd have a bad week. There'd be articles about, is, has, he, has he lost it? There'd be fans calling me on the radio station there. He, he's done. Let's get rid of it. This guy's the greatest ever. There's n zero debate. There's not even a conversation. There's not even another person you could possibly bring up. You, and that happened time and time again. The media in New York, Boston, Philly, in particular, those three cities, and even Chicago, I know it's not East Coast, way tougher on their teams than in Cleveland. So this idea that Cleveland media, and I don't love everybody here in the media either. I've taken pot, pot shots at people, you know that. But like this idea that the media is out to get the teams, they're too negative. When the teams suck, you got to say they suck. What the hell else are we supposed to do? We all want the Browns to win because it is good for business. I'm confused where people work at. When I worked in corporate America, you had a quota, a revenue goal every single month. Like it was like it was a clockwork. And if you didn't hit the revenue goal, you had to do a whole presentation about why you didn't hit the revenue goal and what changes you're going to make in the next week under budget concerns, uh, how are we going to get it done? Hey, listen, NASA is really, really, they're really tough on the engineers because guess what? If they mess up, people blow up in space. Hey, police officers, they they got they got vest cams on now. They we critique everything they do and stops. You know why? Because if something messes up, they die. At the end of the day, we're adults, people. If you're an adult, you should have to understand negativity is part. Things you don't want to hear are part of your life. And that's just a reality. This is sports. Yeah. This is someone's job. It happens sometimes. And, you know, so get, listen, I'm glad that Juan Thornhill's on social media. I know the percentage of our fan base that feels the way that Juan Thornhill does, where you can't say anything negative about the team ever. We'll be supporting him and saying we're a bunch of jerks and we're mean and I'm not from Cleveland and all that same old crap we've heard a million times before. It's just silly. It really is. And the player, like, if you're fair in your criticism to me, like, I, 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 the play, that's part of the gig. When you're a player, you're going to be criticized sometimes by the media. 
What drives me nuts is you could say 99 things good about a player and one thing bad, and they'll never say, you know, thanks for that nice article. Thanks for this. And maybe they do to you, whatever, I've once in a while, yeah, but I doubt very it. Often. But you say one negative thing, what's your problem, Jason? Yeah. Right? Oh, that's happened. I mean, yeah. when Tra- I'll give you an example of Trevor Bauer from me on the radio. Like, when he first got acquired by the, the Indians, most of the media members, especially radio people, didn't even know who he was when he first came to the minors. And I was lauding this guy. Top prospect. Great stuff. Yeah, he's unique. He's a little weird. We found out how- he was very weird. But, like, this guy's going to be great. And I was talking about this guy for years as he was coming through the system when nobody else knew who the hell he was. And one, and then I criticized him once for something in Oakland. He blocked me on Twitter. He's ripping me on Twitter because he's a baby. And now he can't even get out in Japan because he sucks and he's finished. And good riddance. <laughs> That's personal. And he can get mad at me for that. Hey, can I get a shield over here, bro? I need a shield. Sorry, I'm spitting on. all over the place. Man, this guy, he's sitting over here like the honky-tonk man, bro. <laughs> like, this dude is. <laughs> I'm out of control. <laughs>